After studying the development of the atomic theory, you have seen evidence that the atom is the smallest part of an element that is characterized by its physical and chemical properties. At this juncture, we are going to look at the individual nucleides of particular atoms. The atom, being the smallest part of matter, consists of protons, neutrons in the nucleus, surrounded by electrons outside the nucleus. In an atom, the total charge is equal to zero. Therefore, the total positive and the total negative charges are equal. So the number of protons and the number of electrons in an atom are equal. Masses of atoms measured in grams are very small. An atom of oxygen, 16 for example, has a mass of approximately 2.7 times 10 to the minus 23 grams. It is only in this century that scientists have been able to measure masses this small. Although we know the actual masses of atoms, for most chemical calculation, it is more convenient to do or to use relative masses. As you have learned in Unit 1, scientists use standards of measurement that are consistent and the same everywhere. In order to set up a relative scale of atomic mass, one atom is arbitrarily chosen as a standard and assigned a relative mass value. The mass of all the atoms are then expressed in relationship to this defined standard. The carbon-12 atom has been chosen as the standard by the International Organization of Scientists that governs units of measurement. A single atom of a nucleide of carbon-12 is arbitrarily assigned a mass of exactly 12 atomic mass units. The atomic mass unit is symbolized by the letter U. One atomic mass unit, or 1U, is exactly 1 12th the mass of carbon-12 atom, or approximately 1.66 times 10 to the minus 24 grams. The atomic mass of the carbon-12 is exactly 12U. The mass of an atom now that expressed we have in atomic talked mass a little bit units about is atoms. called the atomic Let's mass Let's talk about the particles that make the up atoms. the atoms. Particles that are smaller than the atom are called subatomic particles. The three main subatomic particles that form an atom are protons, neutrons, and electrons. The center of the atom is called the nucleus. Any particle found inside the nucleus is called a nucleon. Since the development of the atomic theory, scientists have learned a great deal about the properties of the atomic nuclei. For our purposes in chemistry, the nucleus of an atom can be considered to consist of two different types of particles. Protons have a mass of only 1.67 times 10 to the minus 24 grams. Because the mass of the proton is so small, it's more convenient to use a different scale whose units are called the atomic mass unit to represent the mass of a proton. A proton is assigned one atomic mass unit, which is relatively the same size as a neutron. The proton carries a unit positive charge of plus one, which is basically equal in magnitude to that of an electron, which is minus one. The neutron, an uncharged particle with a mass slightly greater than that of a proton, has a mass of around 1.67 times 10 to the minus 24 grams, which we assign it then a relative mass of one atomic mass unit. Electrons occupy the space outside the nucleus and have a charge equal to but opposite of a proton. Electrons are much less massive than either the proton or the neutron. 
having a mass of only 1,836 the size of a proton, which is basically zero AMUs. It has a charge equal to uh, in magnitude, but different in sign to a proton. Its relative charge is minus one. All the atoms of a particular element have the same number of protons in the nucleus. This number is a basic property of an element called its atomic number and given by the symbol of capital Z. In a neutral atom, the number of protons in the nucleus is exactly equal to the number of electrons outside the nucleus. Consider, for example, the element hydrogen with an atomic number of 1 and uranium with an atomic number of 92. All hydrogen atoms have one proton in the nucleus. All uranium atoms have 92 protons in the nucleus. In a neutral uh, hydrogen atom, there is one electron outside the nucleus. In a uranium atom, there are 92 electrons outside the nucleus. The mass number of an atom, given by the symbol capital A, is found by adding up the number of protons and neutrons in the nucleus. All atoms of a given element have the same number of protons, hence the same atomic number. They may, however, differ from one another in mass and therefore in mass number. This can happen because although the number of protons in an atom of an element is fixed, the number of neutrons is not. It may vary and often does. Consider the element hydrogen. There are three different kinds of hydrogen atoms. They all have one proton in the nucleus. A light hydrogen atom, the most abundant type, has no neutrons in the nucleus. Another type of hydrogen, called deuterium, has one neutron in the nucleus. Still a third type of uh, hydrogen atom called tritium has two neutrons in the nucleus. All atoms that contain the same number of protons but different number of neutrons are called isotopes. There are two different ways to represent a nucleide particle. The first way to represent a nucleide particle is to use the chemical symbol for the element as your central location. As a subscript on the left hand side, we have the atomic number of that particular element which equals the number of protons. As a superscript on the left hand side, we have the mass number of that nucleide, which equals the number of protons plus neutrons. As a subscript, I'm sorry, a superscript on the right hand side, we have the total charge of the particle, which equals the number of protons minus the number of electrons. So if I look at this particle of carbon, the atomic number is six. Therefore, this nucleide contains six protons, which identifies it as a carbon atom. When looking at the mass of 14, I know I have six protons, and protons plus neutrons have to equal 14. So six plus the number of neutrons equals 14, there must be eight neutrons inside the nucleus. The total charge is equal to the protons minus the electrons. So in this case, zero will equal six protons minus x number of electrons. 
So in order for the total charge to be zero, there must be six electrons. The second way to represent a nucleide would be to use the name dash the mass number. So the name of the element is given, or just the symbol of the element. The number at the end represents the mass number of that particular atom. This symbol can only be used to represent an atom. The mass number at the end equals the protons plus neutrons. Now, to use this nucleide symbol, we would have to look up the symbol for the name of the element, sulfur. So sulfur has a symbol of S. I go to the periodic table and look up the atomic number of sulfur, which is 16. Therefore, sulfur atoms have 16 protons inside their nucleus. If I look, this it can only represent an atom. Therefore, it can have 16 electrons because in an atom, the number of protons equals the number of electrons. That leaves me with the number of neutrons. 32 is the mass number. I know that all sulfur atoms have 16 protons. Therefore, 32 equals 16 protons plus X number of neutrons. That would give me, solving my equation, 16 neutrons inside the nucleus. When an atom loses or gains electrons, charged particles called ions are formed. Metal atoms typically tend to lose electrons to form positively charged ions called cations. Examples include the sodium plus one ion, and the calcium plus two ion form from atoms of metals such as sodium and calcium. Nonmetal atoms form negatively charged uh, ions called anions by gaining electrons. Consider, for example, what happens when atoms of nonmetals such as chlorine and oxygen gain electrons. The chlorine atom gains one electron to become chlorine minus one ion. The number of protons remains the same, but the number of electrons changes from 17 electrons in an atom to 18 electrons in an ion. For oxygen, if it becomes oxygen minus two ion, the number of protons in both the atom and the ion are eight protons, but the atom has eight electrons and the ion has 10 electrons. Notice that when an ion is formed, the number of protons in the nucleus is unchanged. It is the number of electrons that is increased or decreased.